Good morning, it's the 4th of August 2017. Not July like I said yesterday, it's August. It was August the 3rd yesterday. So the time is 11.25 a.m. It's a beautiful crispy blue sky outside in Christchurch. And I was just singing to myself, let's go! Do 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 Now that is from Commodore Amiga Lemmings Lemmings game. Let's go! Do 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 and then there's cannon fodder and all those sorts of things. Great the Amiga was, but I did sell it a while back. Probably regret it. And I had a tower as well, which had a a huge 2.1 gigabyte hard drive in it. It was like the cat's pajamas back then in the 90s. Anyway, I'm going to get on with the chest right now, and so um, and we can um, we can get right into it. Okay, here we go. <clears throat> so first of all, what are these guys up to? We're going to be going off outside because it's so sunny out there. We want to check out the people's cars. Oh, do you? That's right. Yeah, because Kias are known for um, pouring off window wipers and all that. So, yeah, Dave, we want to get out there and have some fun. We don't want to be in here all day. It's such a lovely day, even though it is very cold. Here in New Zealand, it's a lot colder than Australia. I have to put my scarf and gloves on. It's freezing. Oh, well, that's the way we've got it here in New Zealand. That's all. And um, you guys are pretty quiet today. I'm not forgetting you guys. And here's Kiwi Honey Bee Bear from New Zealand. Um, oh, Dave, hurry up. Okay. Uh, would you hurry up, Dave? Okay. Uh, would you hurry up, Dave? Oh, goodness. And and there's, um, there's Kiwi, of course. Yeah, Dave, hurry up! Oh, that wasn't you. That was skinny. That was skinny. That was skinny. That was Eskimo, um, Pingy. Yeah, yeah, hurry up! Okay, Dave, um... We see the same position as yesterday with the correspondence game. Lots of laughter there. Um, because um, Black lost um, soon thereafter. Okay, right. We're going to start again now. We're going to do a new position setup. Thank you very much for my word from our sponsors there. Thank you very much. That was great to hear from you as all. Now we're going to start the game now. And then we're away. Right. This was played yesterday, this game. Or this morning or last night. And uh, it's on chess.com. So I'll just pick this out of one, some of my games. This one, I am white. So I play, I could just look at the score and then I know what color I am. Yeah, we've got the, the engine on, of course. I've always forgot to turn that off. E3, D5, D4, C5. F4, Knight C6, Knight F3, E6. Bishop E2, F5, castles, knight F6. See, I'm not even hardly looking at what black's doing. It's that you don't even have to hardly look at what black's doing because you've got things covered. If they go bishop out here, you've got the bishop on E2, so the knight can move if you really want to and all that sort of thing. <coughs> <clears throat> oh, 
I'll just go King H1, Bishop E7, Knight E5, G6, Knight T2, and if Pawn takes here, then I'm going to take Knight here. As I made a wee error, so that's okay. If Pawn takes Pawn, I'm just going to go Knight C6. And then that threatens the queen, and it also gets my pawn back on d4. So we error there, hey, bit of an erring. <coughs> Usually I play c3. So anyway, G6, knight D2, C4. Okay, well, that's all right. I went A4, just to, no real need, but I did it. Bishop D7, C3, knight E4. Knight E4, F E4. G4, bishop F6. Ninety-seven. Now I'd actually take the um, bad white squared bishop, so I might be doing black a favour. But at the same time, I'm I'm focusing on my f5 break, and I play that anyway, even though um, things progress the way that they're not meant to go. They go another way. So anyway, queen d7, and then I go f5, ef5. G F five, okay. So actually, I'm giving white, white's giving up a pawn here. G F five and Bishop H five. So I get to move the king out of its um, home position, and uh, now it has to move. Even though there have been some, a couple, a set of, a pair of. Um, pieces have gone off the board the king is still a wee bit airy in the middle of the board <coughs> so we've got king um, where have we got the king moving to we've got the king moving to e7 and now I play b4 with the idea of this bishop can come out here soon I probably I played it in such a way that I played b5 first <coughs> um, but I probably should have played <coughs> excuse me bishop a3 with the threat of b5 and that would have been annoying to black and it's five minute game of course so I now do make that mistake uh, my opponent went look a g8 and I should just play this, but they can go king to d8 and sort of castle their king. I go b5, knight a5. So this allows the knight into this hole. That's okay. You go bishop a3. Very like the um, tactics yesterday in the match game of Wednesday night. Of the second of second of um, August at the Canterbury Chess Club. Some of my tactics are sort of like obvious and in your face, and they're not really subtle, are they? But you know, sometimes you just can't do much about it. Bishop a3, King e6. <coughs> now, if this rook wasn't here, I can play this move. So if you imagine this rook is not here, and it's somewhere over here like, I can actually go bishop g4, and that's a stunner. I know it's basic again, but what it's threatening is bishop takes pawn on, on um, I could set the position up. 
But what it would be threatening is bishop takes pawn check and bishop takes queen. So if pawn takes bishop, then you've then white would have queen takes pawn on g4, check, and there the king cannot move anywhere to protect the queen. The king cannot move here or here, and and it can't put anything in the way. So it's just having to relent by going back to f7 which is the only square from here, queen g4 and then queen takes bishop and the rest, I mean queen takes d7, the queen on d7 the rest is history but that's just uh, uh, <coughs> uh, sort of a made up line or it's sort of like showing you some tactics which is all good because then you can see these sorts of things or you can create them in that in chess and that's what's really really important in chess is to be able to create opportunities or I got told a long long time ago um, in the Otago Chess Club they wrote in the Otago Daily Times which is the um, newspaper back there um, they wrote that Wegener um, I don't even know where he comes up with these ideas, but he he seems to find um, he seems to find things and make them happen or whatever and that sort of thing. And that's true. That's what I do tend to do. <coughs> so I tend to um, come up with mo with moves that are not immediately obvious. And sometimes they're in your face, as I'm saying. So we just had bishop a3 check, king e6, rook g1. <coughs> rook g1, and guess what? No one really wants to take either rook. Um, knight b3. Okay, alright, I have to do something about my rook and I've only got a couple of moves for it so I go um, rook b1 now my opponent goes rook g5, a wee bit cheeky actually a wee bit cheeky so what I do here is rook g5, bishop g5, and now I get a wee bit tactical now, just a wee bit, just a tad tactical, I get a wee bit tactical here, oh no I don't, I thought I'd go queen here, because um, that would, th um, that would threaten the rook can't go here, but the queen can. The queen can go here. Why can't the rook go here? I'll ask of the people out there that want to see the tactics. Why can't the queen? Why can't the rook go to g8 here for black? Because of this move here. <clears throat> and you might say, well, what's that doing? Well, it's winning a piece at the moment. It might not be the greatest thing in the world. It might be that black can play this. Pawn takes here, and then um, pawn takes here, and have this open file for the queen and rook, with their knight established on b3, which is actually quite well placed, but it might be a little bit out of the running. Queen e2, it might be a a good place for the knight but I didn't sort of mind it there I do have to watch out for it but practically speaking pardon me practically speaking there's no scope really for it and it'll be um, something I have to worry about in the end game if the end game is not already reached here as we know it <coughs> Rook g8, so I go rook g1, which is actually pinning the bishop on g5. So the threat is this.
Rook G7 removes the threat. This should be a fate. See, just being a bit pesky. Okay, so bishop f8 threatens the rook, obviously. Bishop h6, bishop g7. So white wins a, an exchange here. Bishop g7, queen g2 now, look. Now look, see, and I'm not worried about this knight because the knight's not really doing anything, is it? And it can wombo around here, can't go here or here or here. It doesn't want to take that pawn, does it? And meanwhile, I'm attacking this bishop twice with my queen and rook battery. Okay, so I go queen g2, they go bishop f6. Now, most people would sort of say, well, this is looking pretty certain. Um, probably is, and but these players keep playing. Queen g8, and now... There's no interposing here because I'm just going um, bishop or queen f7 check. I could go he if here, which I'm not going to analyze it too much. I can go here, here, and here, but black, what, um, white, or not, black cannot play queen f7 because it's check to um, check to the king with the queen. So if the king takes here, I just merely take the queen. But black just plays king. Kink as the uh, Asia. I mean, as the um, <coughs> Europeans say, kink. Um, they'd say kink, not king. Um, they'd they'd say kink e7, not kink f7, because then it's um, uh, basically more or less checkmate with queen takes queen check on d7 checkmate so here is just a fantasy line i'm just showing you looking outside the square again <coughs> so white black cannot play queen f7 of course as then it's an obvious winning of the queen and then thereafter of the bishop so if, if here we can just play this And here is the next force move, and queen takes, and it's all over really, isn't it? I mean, there's no point looking at that, is there? We've got, I'll show you how it's over. Now what's black going to do now? If here, in here, okay. And the next move, I'm not going to show you for what, what that is. You can figure that out yourself. It is very, 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 very easy, chesses. <coughs> That was a word for my sponsor. Right, now the next thing is, um, which I'd love a sponsor, it'd be great to have a sponsor, wouldn't it? And I wouldn't have to do this at the library. I used to just do it off my phone, the internet, right onto the internet from my, via my phone. But that was um, costing a bit of data. And I've got no data, by the way. So anyway, here we go. <coughs> right, now, can we get rid of this once and for all? I go queen g8, check, and my opponent goes not queen f7, as previously mentioned, and not king here either, goes king d6, the new main line. The computer should know, Dave, the computer should know, it's the new main line. Yeah, no, it should know. Bishop f7, a bit odd this move, a bit odd. Knight d2, bishop d5. Has white got time to muck around taking pawns? My opponent plays decent moves. These are decent, reasonable moves. I have to do something. I want to do something about these moves because they've just been a bit of a pain. They go knight d2 now. They go back out again. And I just take this pawn because I'm attacking it twice. That's just sort of elementary there, dear Watson. Um, then I've got knight c4 and I've got queen c4. Queen c4, 
queen e6. Queen c5 for some reason. King d7 only move. It's the only move on the chessboard for black to make. Queen d5. Am I starting to lose the thread? Queen d6. <clears throat> Queen d6, king d6, and I'm not going to promise I play this properly because we were very short of time. Rook g8, king d5, rook f8, my opponent plays bishop c3. There are other moves, like I've said, but I'm not going to go into too much detail here either. King c4, while well, yes. well, black could just go back here or black back but I wouldn't advise it so they are active they go king c4 so that I, it's harder for me rook f7 king d3 rook b7 king e3 Now, I have to be careful because like that pawn is very dangerous that e pawn that's a very dangerous e past e pawn so I have to be careful here I go king g2 bishop d4 and I keep on my holiday I go rook h7 because I think to myself well you know um, what is happening here I have to um, scheme here in the end game I have to scheme I've said that before in the end game you do not go into big combinations and all that sort of thing you can but it's best to scheme and to think where and what do I have to do here to fix this um, issue because at the moment this e pawn can win for black very easily so I have to scheme about what am I going to do about that pawn on e3 on e4 which can be on e3 and it turns out on e3 very shortly I went rook h7 king d2 now what is black is white is sweetened with this pawn just marching okay now I thought I played that move Rook e7. I thought I played this move, but I didn't. I played rook e7. Now, see here, after e3, I've got a natural born square to um, to um, blockade this pawn on the white square from moving, even though my rook is behind. Even though my rook is behind, but the king and the rook on e7 and the king on e3 will be preventing that pawn from moving for the near future and then I can run this pawn and I can also look to take that with my rook the the pawn on e3 when it goes there rook e7 e3 now if I leave it then I give black chances by um, e2 gives black pretty good chances so I go king f3 king d3 now that just gives me the opportunity of this. Now if e2 now, I just go simply sw swap off. Swap an off ski. Rook d4, etc. King takes, and I have to take that pawn. Now notice that black didn't have time to push the pawn now. Queen in, because it's check. So I sacrifice my rook back and take this pawn. And now the only chance is for either black to prevent this pawn from going but they're sitting there in a bit of a quadrangle they're sitting there going well um, I want to grab these pawns here but I also have to watch this one that can march up and if I don't grab enough pawns here then this is scheming you see and then then white can probably get their king here and win this pawn and um, push their b pawn because have I got time well, see if we're in the square first. Yes, we're in the square. We're in the Nigel Schwartz square. 
even though this one gets me complicated a wee bit because white's got two moves here so I count the square as one two three four five okay so one two three four five so black is in the square at the moment if they're here then the pawn um, can run can it so anyway king <coughs> that's not what happened but that's what my feeble threat was <coughs> King C4, well, King C4 is the new main light. The computer should know, Dave. The computer should know. Now if I go here, it's all over after this. It's finished. I can resign. Or I can play on. Because there's no way... If white black plays it probably. If black plays it incorrectly, e2, I've got this. If black plays here or here from here, because there's three moves here, isn't there? There's one, two, three. Can you work out what the best move is for black here in this? part of the end game where I'm a whole rook up but how do I stop the e pawn on e2 if I if this is the position I've got my coffee here my Pam's coffee now so do you can you see what move to play for um, black there are two we can flip the board so you can have a look at it from the black's point of view so black's going towards um, kiwi, honey bear, teddy bear, honey bee, bear. Uh, black's going towards there, so they're just about going to queen their pawn. So, can you see what move if this was the position, which it isn't? Um, can you see what black should play here? Now, one idea is, or or so, one or so idea for black to play is a blunder and one is the safe move <coughs> so what is it I'll just take another slocky as the Dutch call of my coffee Lakabaki coffee and I don't get the Dutch completely right but nor do they get me right either they always get me wrong just joking so what is black's best response what about here or here are they any good they look all right I mean how's the pawn going to be stopped here how can the pawn be stopped If white goes here, then it's just queen, check, okay, and then straight away black wins white's rook next move. So is that the move? Now I don't really want to show you the moves over the board, I would rather you see them on the board. So what does white play if king c3 or king b3 or king c5 what does white play or what does um, black play here now and then the next move to look at it in your head because in chess realistically you can play that way and a lot of people do but you can't sort of sit there and um, analyse it out over the board by moving the pieces around not normally anyway not if you're playing competition 
And if you're just playing with your friends, you can take your moves back and all that sort of thing. I do not advise... There's another one. I do not advise... Hide your bishops and... Hide your bishops. And... And social chess... Social friendly chess... Friendly chess... Play touch move, even in lightning. Touch move. <clears throat> so it's hide your bishops is one of the ones I like. It's not my one, but hide your bishops and. I know I'm going on a little bit here, but I'm sitting there getting you to analyse this position. And a lot of you will be thinking, well, I know what the answer is. It's obvious. If king here, okay, now I'm going to play it for those. So I say, um, when you're playing social friendly games of chess, as William Hartston calls it, international master back then, William Hartston and How to Chess, just a fun book, not a real one. He says um, that uh, there's no such thing as a friendly game of chess. So, um, so that's chapter three or something in his book. And then chapter four is um, friendly game, games of chess with the inverted commas around the word friendly because there's no such thing. Because that uh, you can have your friends, but you can still there's rivalry. That's all there is to it. So if king here, rook check, okay, okay. Now this is the best of the the worst moves for black. This is the best line, okay. King here, so that after rook here. The pawn's going to be stopped, isn't it? So the best for black here, even though it's lost, is rook king here to defend the pawn. But it's too late now, baby blue. So if and, and black can also be met just by rook e2 instead of h4. Or um, a5 and b6 is, is promising for white, even though we're looking at it from the wrong end. And whatever this becomes, not a pawn, it has to be a piece, not a king, um, and a king, and a king. Um, but whatever this becomes, white merely takes it and marches their pawn to queen. Okay, so that's um, the answer to that. Now the other one is worse unto that, is this, and then, new variation, the king has can come here still but here and here it's just the king's one square away this time so I don't even know what the difference is I can't even work it out so it doesn't matter but I thought that it was a difference but black does not black will not have what um, here it's check anyway <clears throat> so here we've got this position here so these two moves here are no good because the rook can get in behind with rook here get him behind get him behind just like our dog from foot rock get him behind dog get him behind and that's just a, a a lot of kiwis will know what i'm talking about not kiwis themselves yes i do dave i know what you mean yeah i know but i mean like just generally the other kiwis out there know what i'm talking about but we're not talking about kiwi birds what what do you mean dave well we're just not yeah here goes the dog next door heard me he heard me go um he he heard me go um about the dog and foot rock flats he heard and so he's starting to bark and put his bit in you know so anyway, we've got this here, and doesn't matter where black goes, 
white gets in behind and takes the pawn, lifts the pawn and um, marches this pawn all the way home or this one all the way home. White can still lose this position. So we're going back to flip the board. So we go back here. The best move for black here is this. This wins for black, in my opinion. But we still have to be careful of one thing. But there's nothing here in it. I want to make up a, a line. I want to make up a line for you. Now this, check. Okay. Now we will just go here for fun. And now here is check. Now notice that if um, black goes here or here then white can win again can you see how white can win again if black goes here or here okay if king here then rook can come here check and if the king goes here which is the only move isn't it then the rook can come back here and it can snuff all the e pawn and the rook and pawn uh, an easy win even if black has this pawn against the rook and king and there's no pawns left of white even if that's the case it's a very easy win for um, white with the rook versus the pawn the rook pawn because now the pawn's just going to get snuffled even though as I say even though um, white might lose these pawns white still has this anyway in the bank so what have we got now we've got um, this so king here king back here or here the same as allows white worth check to force black to move their king now or to get out a check and thereby be able to bring the rook back from holiday as Nimzovich puts it and be able to cover the queen square with the rook even prepared to take the pawn with the rook at the whole cost of the rook because we don't want the queen on board because the queen is going to make it very hard for white's forces or white's camp okay so now we're going to go back to why is this a win for black and i want to show you one other thing now let's for example imagine we'll do that just now i don't want to but we could put a pawn there okay we could put a pawn there for white let's just imagine there's a pawn there which is a bit impossible because the positions are already different but if we put a pawn there um oh hold on no 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 if we put uh oh, i thought i had a checkmate here after king here but i i can't because i've got the pawn there but if i have a pawn oh that's right if i have a pawn here okay say there's a pawn here or the king's here but the king's not so pretty and if there's a pawn here and i'm going to lose there's nothing i can do for white and my opponent plays king here okay we'll just say this is a new variation then if there's a pawn on c3 or bishop on a3 or pawn on a3 oh that's right a pawn on a3 a double pawn on a3 then that would be rook a6 checkmate wouldn't it because the king can't move anywhere and it's checked <clears throat> and it can't take the king rook and it can't move out the way and it can't put something in the between because there's nothing in between that rook and king if there's a pawn here or pawn here or that sort of thing or if there's a piece a knight here this is checkmate so it can be that close chess so we will go back down to the main line <clears throat> and incidentally um, black would have other moves after bishop d4 but if king here then white 
would be met with um, king with e2 and it's pretty horrible for white now after rook c5 these are mistakes these two moves with the king there's only three moves to make with the king these two are blunders regardless of them because they allow rook d3 check and king rook e3 the king can't catch it because the pawn just runs and rook e3 and then the pawn gets snuffled soon thereafter so king c5 is the only main line here for um, black if this was the case and now the checks can occur okay and we can even allow this check because um, white cannot retrieve the pawn on e2 that's going to march the very next move regardless this is no good this is queen check then if king here now the, the thing is is you can play um, as I showed as I've shown the juniors the other day, day to teach them in game skills you can um, practice with your friends the bishop and knight versus king king bishop and knight versus king you can practice queen versus rook bishop and bishop versus bishop and bishop versus um bishop and bishop versus um king um bishop and knight i've said that um to checkmate the king you can do the rook and queen rook versus the queen which i've already said or you can digress you can make it a rook and a knight versus a queen or a rook and a bishop and you can practice them practice them practice them practice them practice them practice them because you get better at with your coordination of pieces now that's something i don't necessarily do so and then the next thing is as i showed them um king and eight pawns nothing else on board you start with king and eight pawns and you play that and that teaches you in game skills so you just play with king versus eight pawns now what i'm impressed with is when i um had a rook pawn and a rook and a rook uh, and a bishop was on board there were bishops on board and a bishop each and i showed um a grand master um, one of the top grandmasters in the world and his answer was an immediately instant and it was a real wriggly um, thing for my eyes but the answer came from the grandmaster instantly the grandmaster said this is a draw and this is a win if the pawn's here and if the pawn's there it's a, a draw and if it's the pawn is back it's a win so here it's no good okay so what has what can white do after king c5 uh probably resign or they can try and um play on and hope for a mistake they can hope for that sort of thing so i'm just being very very um sort of kind of boring here in regards to um showing what to do here for white um, there's nothing to do apart from this check and like i said the king can just come here if it so wishes and it's not advised to come up here and here and here because then we can go with rook d3 and rook e3 and rook taking the pawn so here we can even allow this for black can even allow this to happen um this is probably though white's best chance but i wouldn't like it so this is the, the this is the end of the session because i can't drag it on anymore um now here we've got to watch out for this move because that's a blunder to the queen g1 check or queen f2 check but not queen e3 check because then you can th um, you're throwing it all away um, as the bg say but here or here 
is just a straight win of the rock and thereafter it's very very easy for white to lose blacks totally won here after this check we'll just be a bit pedantic about it and we will show you okay Now what does white do? Even if they flick their pawn, oh, they go king up here, okay? Let's say they go king here. Well, black can play here. And now, really the next best move is h4 or thereabouts. Queen b6, okay? Now the king would like to try, let's see, it's all scheming. Now the king would like to come here, and then we can come here. We're attacking this pawn. And then the king can come here. It's probably the best. And we can just take this pawn now. If the pawn moves here, which is probably the best, as I'm saying, we can just go queen here, check. And now the king wants to defend the pawn. And now we just go queen here. And just um, king here is a very good possibility. Now, not queen b6 because of stalemate and I've got the speaker off because I'm charging my phone believe it or not king b6 um, still gives white a square and an a5 move if they so wish now if they play king here it's simply queen here check and king here and queen here or here or here or here checkmate but not here because then it's a draw if here then if we put the engine on now, it will say this is equal, 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 not, 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 point, not, 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 not. See, it's equal, not, 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 because black's just thrown it all away. But you can do that in chess, and finger drops, it happens all the time. So anyway, so that's pretty cool. So what we're going to do then is I'm going to go back to the, the game so that's something that black has to be careful of white has to be careful of I mean that was all just a king f3 was king e4 I mean was just a make believe line the whole thing I wasted all that time I know but it's it's instructive. That's what I'm doing here. New mainline. The computer should know, Dave. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Dave, they should know. Okay, King E2. Now Black should resign. And guess what they do and my score for the um, Fritz 11 in depth analysis is 7.38 in my favor which is a decisive advantage of course it's pretty bad for black here okay I think that could be the end of the session but I will show you just um, quickly that funny story about the correspondence game again. The correspondence chess, what you have to look out for in correspondence chess. E4 and black went B6 and said bishop B7 against any move that white plays. I play bishop B7, the next move unconditional okay and my junior my young junior found the move bishop a6 bishop b7 bishop b7 not my junior but the one of the juniors at the canterbury chess club found it because this player thinks outside the square and that's why this player found it 
and so that's why I say they have great promise because normally you would not think about putting your bishop there on a6 because you get it taken but because it was unconditional it means unconditional unconditional means unconditional and because it was unconditional that was it that was the end of the game now let's just um, play this as it's off, first off the board then black's winning if it's first off the board okay so there i started with talk about the Amiga computer which has got uh, had very very good graphics back then and I think they still beat the graphics some of the games I love from um, Amiga are Cannon Fodder, Super Frog, Lee Means and that sort of thing and um, Brat, Brat's a good one it's about a wee boy okay Anyway, that's the end of my session, and I hope you enjoyed it. So you can practice all those things like knight versus a rook endgame, um, just with a knight versus a black rook or a white rook or whatever colour you want to be, and you can be both sides and see if you can win it with that. So, um, do this one, rook and bishop versus rook. Um, that's a good one, or rook and knight versus rook. Okay, thank you very much. Bye.